Okay, so how many of us can say that we're living the life that we've always dreamed of? So not many of us. So do you know that we have the authority and the capability to write the chapters in our book called Life? Do you understand that we have the authority and the power to take control over those negative thoughts? We have the power to take control over fear, worry, anxiety, of those thoughts telling us that we can't do it, that we can't be successful. We have the power to replace those thoughts with positivity. You know, I always wondered when I was a little kid why certain people made it to be successful and why others were not successful. And as I grew older and I started to get more exposure, I had to realize that the difference between successful people and people that were not successful was all in our mindset. You know, I've never met a successful person that walks around saying, oh, I'm broke. You know, I can't get out of debt. You know, I'm never going to make it. And throughout my, you know, years of growing up, I met people that were successful, that I consider successful, that always spoke positivity. You know, they would always say, I can do it. I can be great. I am confident. I am strong. And those successful people are the ones that separate success from those that are not successful. And I had to realize that change starts with us. Change starts with you. And it's all in our mindset. We have the ability to either think negative or to think positive. And the way your life unfolds is all how you think and your thoughts. You have what I call dreamers and you have risk takers. You have the dreamers that sit back and dream and they just watch other people accomplish their dreams and they sit back and wonder, why can't I do that? Why is my life still stagnant? Why is this person following their dream and I can't follow my dream? And then you have those risk takers that have a dream and the difference is they put action to their dream. That's the only difference between people that are successful and those that are not. They have a dream and they put action towards that dream. You know, I once lived a life of fear, doubt, negativity. I always felt that because of how I was raised, the circumstances of how I grew up, that I couldn't be like the people that I envisioned. I couldn't be like an Oprah Winfrey because I didn't have the money, I didn't have the resources, I didn't have any mentors. I didn't come from a family of entrepreneurs. You know, I was raised in an environment where it was just survival mode. Like, you had to go to school, you had to go to college, you had to get a job, and you work that job that nine to five until it's time for you to retire. And then when you retire, then you enjoy life. But I've always seen something that was bigger for me. Even as a little girl, I always envisioned I'm a dreamer. I dream big. Not necessarily knowing how I'm going to accomplish this dream, but I dream big. And I was at a position in my life where my life was just stagnant. You know, I was working as a nurse. I worked as a nurse for eight and a half years before I actually started my own business. But I was unhappy and wondering why my life was stagnant. Why was I so unhappy? I would jump from job to job trying to find my happiness. And I had to realize that it wasn't the job that I was at. It was because I wasn't walking in my purpose and I wasn't doing what God put me on this earth to do. It wasn't until I experienced a very tragic time in my life that I really woke up and realized that if I don't change, that I'm not going to create the life that I've always dreamed of. You know, I've always dreamed of living a fulfilled life, living a life of success. And when I say success, I'm not talking about money. Um, when I went through this tragic moment, it was 20, 2013, and I was pregnant with my son, my first son. Um, I have two girls, and this was our last child. This pregnancy was a surprise. You know, we were not expecting to have any more kids. You know, we were fine with our two little girls. So I knew that it was something, and I said, well, okay, God, you know, I'm pregnant, so I'm going to enjoy this pregnancy, and I'm going to be happy with it because I felt that it was a blessing. Eight and a half months later, that's when tragedy struck. Um, my second daughter... I had a C-section with her, and her C-section was an emergency situation, and I had to get a classical incision on my uterus. Not on my stomach, but on my uterus. So the risk when you have a classical um, cut on your uterus, when you get pregnant again with your, with your next child, you're at risk for uterine rupture because you have a cut up and down versus um, transverse on your uterus. Um, and sorry if I'm using medical terms. Um, so I had this cut on my uterus. So when I started to contract with my, with my son, the worst thing happened, and my uterus ruptured. 
I went to the doc, my husband rushed me to the emergency room. They took me to labor and delivery. I got upstairs and the doctors took forever to get my son out. And me being a labor and delivery nurse, I know protocol. I know that once you get, when you have a patient that's going into labor and there's no heartbeat and the baby's heart rate is dropping, you're supposed to get this patient back to the OR. So me being a nurse and seeing my son's heart rate drop and there is nothing I can do was very devastating. So eventually they waited until the doctor got there. The doctor then finally took me back to the OR, performed a C-section. When my son was born, he was born brain dead. Because, because he lost oxygen to his brain. Sorry. Um, he lost oxygen to his brain, and when they finally brought him into the room with me, he had all this oxygen, but he was bright and pink. And I asked my mom at that time, I said, is he okay? Her response to me, her look told me that he wasn't. Even though she said he was okay, he wasn't okay. Um, so. Me being a nurse and having a medical background, I already knew that he wasn't here. He was no longer present with us. Um, but at that time, me and my husband, we didn't want to let go. You know, we, we, had, we held strong in our faith. We felt that, you know, God was going to bring our baby boy back to life. And we held on to him for six months and watched him on life support um, for six months because we knew and we were hoping and praying for a miracle that he would wake up one day. But he never w woke up. So we took that pain and we decided to be at peace with our decision to let him go and to be our angels to watch over us and my two girls. So once that happened to me, you know, I decided to take action into my own hands, take, take my faith and activate my faith because instead of being down and depressed and letting that get me down, because postpartum depression is real. Um, and I could have been down and depressed, but I decided that I'm going to take action. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be sane for my two girls. I want to be a good mother to them because I still have to raise them and set a good example for them. So in order for me to stay sane, I had to go back to my passion. And my passion was what I love to do as a little girl. I've always been passionate about hair care. I've always been passionate about beauty. And I found myself just researching ingredients and learning about hair care and how to take care of my hair. And going through my own journey with my hair, I decided to talk about it on social media because that was giving me an outlet of just sanity and giving me something to do, something that I love and something that I was passionate about. And I took that painful situation and turned it into something great. And now that I look back, I understand that the reason why I went through that pain is to get to my purpose today. You know, I sell products, of course, but what I do in my company is bigger than selling hair products. It's way bigger than that. I feel that God put me through that pain to give me a purpose to inspire others to follow their passion, to follow their dreams, because we're here today because we have a dream. And sometimes we have that dream and we don't put activation behind it. And my mission here, I believe, is to inspire others to activate your dream because where do we all find dreams? At the grave. People die not accomplishing what they were born to do. And if that wouldn't have happened to me, I would still be a nurse, still being unhappy, still being miserable in my position, still trying to figure out what my purpose is. And it took for that situation to happen. So I always say that people see the glory. They see the pictures on social media. They think that everything is glamorous, but they don't know the backside of my business. They don't know that I actually went through a painful situation to be where I'm at today. But I took that painful situation, I turned it around and made it into a positive. Instead of being negative and telling myself I can't do it, I, try, I told myself that I can do it. Instead of saying, well, you don't have the resources, you're just a nurse, you don't have any business experience, I took that and said, I can do it. I can be great because God has this vision in me and I always feel that if he puts it in me, he puts me and he, he equips me with everything that I need to be successful. And when I decided to change and think positive and adopt a positive mindset, that's when my life started to change. You know, I started my company four years ago. And to this day, we'll, we'll actually make our four-year anniversary in May. We're in over 18,000 stores. We are a global, thank you. We are a global brand. and. To launch something with no business experience, no knowledge, no money, no resources, to launch that and to have it blessed within four years is nothing but my angel that God took with him 
to bless me to be here today. So I say all that to say I just challenge you to change your mindset, change your thought process, because no matter what your current circumstances are, no matter what situations you face in life, you can be great, you can accomplish everything that you set out to accomplish, but it all starts with you, it all starts in your mindset, and then once you adopt a positive mindset, I challenge you, and I want you to send me a message and let me know that how, how your life has changed. Thank you, guys.